All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do some more spline modeling. And I'm going to show you how to use the lathe command. And this is where you're having something that looks like it can revolve to make this shape. So the first thing I want to do here is go up to, to File, View Image File. And then I can bring in an image as reference. So here's an image I'm using for reference. And then I'm going to show you how to kind of make this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with this is we're looking at this as a profile like this. Okay, we're going to make this as a profile. And the reality is, is this is two pieces. This is a piece, and this is a piece, and really that's a piece too. So we're going to make it in parts. Okay, so first thing we want to do, we want to revolve around the center line okay it doesn't have to be but it's an advantage for us to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my snap on and I'm gonna make it set snap to grid points I'm right clicking on this to get to its options and I am going to draw with a line okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this shape so I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking this is like an imaginary line down the middle and how far over do I need to go so here's the imaginal middle so I'm going to go over, say, right about here, and then I'm going to draw it. Okay, darn it. Okay, I need to make sure I turned off uh, renderable spline, which is what it was doing. Okay, so I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go out here, and then down, and then out, and then down maybe here and then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a revolve so I'm going to pick this and then I'm going to click on our modifier and what we're gonna do is add a lathe modifier to it lathe Okay, and then it's a revolving right now, but it's revolving down the center of it. So what I want to do is on this axis, I want to go move, and I'm going to turn my snap off right now, and I'm going to move this over till it's in the center. And my normals are flipped backwards, so right here if I go flip normals, then I'd be able to see it. I want to go ahead and put my shader on it. and then I'm gonna hit F4 turn on my line and so I move this back over to the center and so what you'll see is it's making this shape I can go ahead and put a mesh smooth on it to smooth it out okay so now we can go in here and start putting locking loops in it. So if I go back down to my lathe, and what I'm going to do is go back to this original line, go ahead and click this button so we can see above it, then I can put locking loops in here. Okay, and how I put locking loops in here is by adding points. So I'm going to go to I'm going to go to um, segment, and then I'm going to go refine. So as I click here and here on this line, you'll see it's putting locking loops on this. I want this a little bit more rounded. I want this tighter. I'll keep this fairly tight. No, we're going to let that round. The further these are out, the more it will round. And you can see but now I'm rounding this out. This is probably a little uh, exaggerated, so I'm going to go back here and go to my vertices, and I'm going to pull these in, and then I'm going to pull that one in, and then that'll round that. So I'm 
getting that kind of a ridge in there. So there, I've pretty much made that shape, all with this lathe, by just drawing a spline. Okay, so let's make the bottom piece. So I'm going to make a new piece, okay, separate pieces. And I want this to overlap this a little bit, so I'm going to start right about here. And this actually goes out, and then it comes back in a little bit, and then it goes back out further. And then I'm going to go straight in, and then straight down, and then I'm going to go at an angle, and then I'm going to go straight in here. Okay, so now I need this to be rounded, so all I have to do is go here on my segment, going to refine, and I'm going to put a point in there, okay? Another way that this can be done is you can grab the segment, and if we go down here, we can divide it into equal parts. By, by default, it goes one. I'm going to put three in here, and you'll see when I divide it, it puts three points in there, okay? I don't really need three. I just need one, but that's a way to divide something perfectly, okay? Then I can go to my vertex, and then I can pull this out a little bit so that this will round when we subdivide it. So now what I can do on this is I can copy this lathe and now I can paste it on this one and it will keep the same center. When you're getting this black thing happening, let's put our shader on it, when you're getting the black thing that's because the normals need to be flipped. And so you may have to come in here and flip the normals. If you put an edit poly on it and you go to the polygons and you pick them, you can tell when the normals are backwards because it will be a dark red. So if I go back to this lathe, Okay, and I flip the normal. See how they're bright red now and they're dark red now? Well, they need to be right bright red. Okay. Okay, so we can put our um, subdivision on it, on it. Mesh smooth. We're getting a pretty good look there. I want this a little bit crisp up here, so I'm going to go back to my line. I can go ahead and tell it, and I don't need this edit poly on there anymore. I'm just going to dump that off. So go back down to my segment, and then I can refine this. And so I want this to be a little more crisp in here. So I'm just going to put me a point there, put me a point here, and you'll see it's making that much more crisp. This roundness looks pretty good right there. I think that all looks pretty good. So I think this piece looks pretty nice. And then if I want this to come in further, I just go to Vertex, pick this, and then just slide it in. Okay, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in there. And then the reality of that is, if I'm gonna turn this off so I can just see the spline, okay. I can go right here, create a line. I need to make sure my snap is on. And I want it to vertex, and then I can draw. I'm gonna hold down my shift key so it goes straight down this little piece here so that it, it drapes in there a little bit. Now, the thing that you have to understand when I did that is it made this part of it, but it's separate piece. So we need to weld the vertices. So you need to pick those. Okay, right click, weld vertices and we want it to be a corner and then let's go ahead and refine it and put a couple of points here 
those are locking loops and so now when we go back then we'll see there's got a little lip in there now another thing I see people doing all the time is they want to attach things together this is a separate piece from this they are separate pieces we do not want them attached together you can see these are not quite lined so what we want to do is to go to this one and we want to realign the pivot point so we want to go to hierarchy effect pivot center to object I want to do the same here center to object so now I can come back to here this is my alignment tool and I click on this one and then it's going to align it X Y and Z position now we don't want the Y because we already had it positioned this way we just need it positioned left and right and forward and backwards and now we know these are aligned to each other so we're gonna name this we're gonna call this um, lamp top connector you just invent names whatever makes sense to you I'm gonna dump my mesh smooth off of there I'm gonna go to this one I'm gonna dump my mesh smooth off of this one and this is lamp connector base and I need to smell right connector then what I can do is if I pick both of them I can come in here and add my mesh smooth or turbo smooth or whatever you want to use on both of them at the same time you'll see this is a telesize now if it's italic then I know it's controlling two thing it's an instance what that's a benefit is if I just pick this one and I say okay I want it to go divisions to three this one went to a division of three two we're just going to go back down to a two. Now the thing we want to do is we want to be able to move these together as one thing. So we don't attach them. We select them both. You go up here to group and you say group them. And then I'm going to write this as the whole lamp connector. And now you'll see it is in a group here now at some point if you decide you need to want to come in here and work on this again when you go to group you do not ungroup it ungrouping destroys the group it's like you delete the group what you want to do is open the group and then I can pick any individual piece to do anything with it that I need to do then later and by the way this pink is the group so I can grab this and I can move it or whatever I can grab this one and move it or whatever if I click on the pink that moves the whole group and so at a certain point I'm finished with whatever I'm doing so I go to group and I close the group and now it'll act like it's one thing but it's actually two things and that's much better for doing any kind of a uh, surfacing I want to do okay so now I want to open the group and now I may decide that I want to come in here and actually put a shell modifier so that because I'm going to be able to see this rim at the top so we can come in here and put a shell on this by default it goes out and I don't want it to go out I want it to go in so I'm gonna make this out zero it needs to be below your mesh smooth and then I'm just gonna turn off the mesh smooth right now and then I can give it some thickness so that that top has some thickness okay now personally for most modeling I don't do this unless it's going to be a piece of glass and I can see inside of it 
because it adds a lot of geometry down inside of it. So I have a tendency to only use this sparingly. I wouldn't use it here. I'm going to trash it. What I would do is just make the part of the inside I'm going to see instead of all of the inside. So if I put an edit poly modifier on this, now I can grab this edge and I can extrude that. Okay. Now, extrude works two ways. You can click this little settings button and then you can come in here and start giving it information. <clears throat> but if you just click on extrude, you can do it manually in the viewport. So I can just click here, click, hold down and drag whichever way I want. And Okay, so when you click on this and you come over here, this is a little tricky. If I click and I hold down and I drag left and right, it's going up and down. So a lot of people, that's kind of tricky to do. So you have your settings, and then we can just say, okay, we're going to make it come in. And then at this point, I'm just going to hold down my Shift key and move it down. And I only need this lip to be down here to a certain distance because I'm going to have a bulb in there. All right. So now that we've done it this way, okay, we're gonna. This is gonna round on us, so we have to put our locking loops in there. So we're just gonna go to our edge, double click, double click, chamfer the distance, and this should be uh, one, and that'll lock that in. Deselect. And then that'll lock that in so we have a little bit of lip there so when our light bulb comes up okay if I go over here and I get tired of seeing that little pink if I just click this off right there then it'll turn that off so I'm not seeing it it's still there but we're just not seeing it okay that is lathing okay how to create a revolve some softwares call it Revolve. I know. I think Fusion 360 calls it a Revolve. Max calls it a lathe. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm not really interested in you putting all these little cuts and stuff in here. Okay. I would probably make that. I probably would not. I would just allow it to be to in, to actually put in here. But this could be made with a lathe too. When you get into some real advanced, if we were getting really advanced and we were actually building this for a client, then you know, then maybe I would build you know this this stuff in here. Uh, before what we're doing, uh, main thing I was trying to show you is how to do a lathe. Okay, all right. Hopefully that helped you. Thank you.